haven't seen one of those for a long time. <laughs> How do you make money for nothing? You get a trampoline or a bed. Well, for a guess out, we could have a jump on it. The answer could be hiding in the 30 million tonnes of household waste we throw out every year. They are ready to be re-loved again, don't you think? That's why entrepreneur Sarah Moore wants to get her hands on things before they hit the skip. Wow, what a retro-looking thing. I love old stuff. Finding it, buying it and reusing it. And I've turned that passion into a business. Transforming items that nobody wants into things that I can sell for a profit. And with some of the country's elite designers and makers... Oh, what have you got? They are a bit weird, aren't they? I love them. She can transform her finds into desirable... Are they beautiful? A labour of love. Valuable... I've never seen anything like that. And hopefully saleable items. Martin, those are amazing. Thanks very much. If Sarah is successful, <laughs> then she can hand the profits back to the very people who had no idea there was cash to be made from their trash. £370. That's amazing. A new day is dawning at the Beaconsfield Recycling Centre in Buckinghamshire. With a fresh stock of cast-offs about to be chucked. But here, looking for things to salvage, is upcycling entrepreneur Sarah Moore. No chance of a rest around here because I am poised to take away three fantastic finds. But you know what the rules are? You snooze, you lose. You definitely don't want them ending up in the skips. Sarah has special permission to seek out three items. Good luck with that. Thank you. That she can hopefully rescue and sell on for cash. Love fish and chips. Maybe not from this skip, though. Andrew and Annette are unloading. But will Sarah think their rubbish is catch of the day? Hello there. Hi, sorry to bother you. I've been watching you from the other side of the recycling centre, looking very busy. Are you clearing out? Yes, yeah, yeah. yes, it's our parents' home. OK, are you brother and sister? Yes, yes. Oh, hi there, how do you do? I'm Sarah. I'm Andrew. Andrew, hi there. Yeah. And I'm Annette. Annette, these look fantastic. Are they things that you've been growing up with for how, however long? Oh, yes, yes. My parents married in 61 and they'd have bought them shortly afterwards. Right. Um, they have got a, a great look to them. I see they've got uh, they've sunk slightly in the seat, or this one has. Well, they were in use, sort of, in that there wasn't a, they, they weren't replaced at all. But we uh, we sort of gradually sunk further and further into them as <laughs> as, <laughs> as the springs broke. Well, actually, yes, I can see the rest of the chairs are in really good condition. There's no wear on the sort of seams or that kind of thing. So. Perhaps um, if I took them away, I could try and refurbish them and do something else with them. Would that be OK? You're very welcome well, you're to. Well, very welcome to, yes, yes. <laughs> our, our parents would love that idea, really. Okay, well, I'll wheel this one away and I'll come back to that one and then I'll, I'll keep in touch if that's OK. Yeah, that's fine. Really yes, good to meet you. Yes, and you. With the rest of it. <laughs> Sarah's first find is a pair of armchairs. Annette, Andrew, would your mum be pleased she's taken them on? I think she'd be delighted, yes. I think she, yes. she's looking down on us from heaven now and saying, oh, what a relief, thank goodness. They're not, <laughs> they're not then, they've escaped this sort of last, you know, step of being thrown into the tip, <laughs> yes. I've either got two for the price of one here or double trouble. It'll take a heap of cash to transform these, but it's a chance I think is worth taking. But who is Sarah entrusting to put some swing back into these 60s seats? Simeon Horton Smith. An upholstery expert, Simeon uses his skills to turn outdated furniture into modern masterpieces, fit for a king. I absolutely love chairs. Whenever I go out, and I might be in a restaurant or a hotel, I'm always looking at the chairs to see what they've used. The most sort of exciting part of my job is when a client brings a really rare chair to me and I get to put a beautiful fabric on it and give it a new lease of life. Not uncommon for me to wake up in the middle of the night and think, I know what fabric to use on that chair or I know how to make that chair look even better. And that's the exciting part of my job. Well, Simeon, let's hope you don't have sleepless nights when you see the two tired chairs Sarah's sending your way.
with one item set aside. They must have known I was coming, the red carpet ready to be rolled out. And she's got moths. Sarah's back on the hunt for two star-studded vines. No point in looking in there. Just be looking out here. Peter's arrived, but will Sarah think his cast-offs are worth saving? Hello there. Hiya. I'm Sarah. Hi. What's I'm your Peter. name? Peter. Oh, I see. A vintage pram, is it? A toy pram or a child's it's pram? A, it's a child's pram. My wife had it when she was younger. It's probably about 60 years, I should think. What a sweet old thing. It looks like one of those really smart ones. Probably would have just hung on to it and a bit longer, but we want to clear the garage out and stuff, so yeah, that's why I'm taking it. And so is it, is it all there, all the bits? Yes, all the pieces should be there. So there's a There's a canopy thing that goes on which you can sort of put material goes on the top and wow well it's just the kind of thing that um it's so old and so lovely it'd be great to see what could be done with it well you're welcome to it because as i say it, it, it's going it was going to be dumped so and does your wife know that you're throwing it away yes yes she does yeah. <laughs> just checking hopefully i can show her as well what's happened to her old pram certainly no problem yeah lovely excellent well i'll take that bit first and then come back for the rest Sarah's strolling off with a vintage pram. Peter, do you think she'll be able to save it? I think it'd be great if it can be recycled and used for something. Uh, it's a lot better than putting it into the skip. years ago this must have been the most fantastic present ever all of your friends would be so jealous of a pram like this it would have been sparkling the chrome would be gleaming and it would have been in perfect condition which is a bit difficult to imagine now I'm hoping to be able to do something really lovely with this to make it the talk of the town again but who does Sarah have in mind to get the conversation started it's the Dr. Frankenstein of debris, Mark Haig. He's an engineer that turns rusty rubbish into some rocking robots. I'll often start with a head. I'll kind of hold it like, like Yorick, kind of with this skull. Try to work out exactly what's going to fit with it. And then once I find all the items, then it's the challenge of how it's going to be put together. Love it. But will Mark throw his toys out the pram when he sees Sarah's latest find? That's two items tucked away. But Sarah still needs to find something she can work on herself. No gnomes? I'd love a gnome. Uh, no, no, uh... no gnomes at all. Phil's arrived. But will what he's unloading complete Sarah's search? Hello there. Hiya. Haven't been smashing up your table, have you? Uh, yeah, I've been smashing up uh, a table, yeah. Yeah, hi, I'm Sarah. Oh, hiya, I'm Phil. Phil, oh, very nice to meet you, and I like your table. Oh, it's got a, a nice look to it. A vintage, vintage, what is it, dining table, is it? Um, it was my mother-in-law's. Um, right. I, oh, I dread to think how long she had it. I mean, it's just not wanted anymore, and... Um, we're sort of clearing out the flat, so... Uh, right, OK. So, hence, um... It's got to go. Hence, it's like that, <laughs> so... I'm really sorry to hear that, but I, I really like her taste in tables. I yeah. think it looks like um, it could be put back together. Um, are all the bits there? Yeah, all the bits are there, yeah. So, Excellent. Yeah, oh, you're welcome to it. Fantastic. Oh, I definitely think there's something to be done with it. I've got a few ideas, but, uh, yeah, if you don't mind, if I can put it back together, yeah. can I come and find you and show you what I've done with it? Yeah, of course you can. Of course you can, yeah. Excellent. Well, I'll take a couple of bits and then uh, come back and get the rest of it. Yeah, sure. Sarah's final find is a dining table in quite a few pieces. Happy it's avoided the skip, Phil? Yeah, I've got a shock of my life, actually, today, turning up. So, no, it's great, and if the use can be made of it, then brilliant. Well, life would be boring if it was easy. This table's been really smashed up, but it's not going to stop me taking it away and trying to make the best of it. I reckon put back together, it could be really stylish. And I think I've got free reign to do what I like with it as well, which is quite exciting. And with that, Sarah has her items. Simeon could have his work cut out revamping the old armchairs. Mark needs to come up with a creative way to repurpose the vintage pram. And Sarah will take on the broken table to try and bring it back from the brink. Well, 
I've had a load of fun here today, but it's not all about me, this recycling malarkey, it's a team game. I'm gonna need a load of help from my players to get this lot over the line. Away from the busy recycling centre, in Stockport, Simeon has taken delivery of the armchairs. First impressions? Got to be honest, I absolutely love them. I'm always thinking what's going to arrive, but these are perfect for my style. Well, I've sent my chairs ahead and I haven't heard from Simeon and bad news travels fast, so I'm hoping he's going to accept them. He's got a great track record on taking on things like this, but these could be a real challenge. Hey, how are you doing? Hey, Sarah, how are you? Oh, I'm all right. They've uh, travelled well. What do you think? I think they're very in style. I, I love them. I could come up with a hundred reasons why they're great but it's all about kind of what you want to, what, what, what's your plans for them. Something that I had thought about is the chairs are made up of some quite distinct panels, so I was wondering about colour blocking through them, but that I know is more work, because I know there are sort of some angles here. What do you reckon? I love that idea. You know, it's so popular at the moment, colour blocking, whether it's on walls, furniture, even lamps. So, yeah, I'm totally up with that idea. What kind of colours do you think? I think they need to be quite clean colours, actually. Maybe not too textured, but to have something that is really quite matte and flat, yeah. almost like a felty wool sort mm. of thing. Does that exist? Most definitely. You know, we could even look at when the two chairs are together, certain parts of it matching up. But I think your idea of having these lines and colour blocking it, so it's all, it's all, this, this plan is coming together too well. Excellent. I like your enthusiasm, but. Can you imagine how much it's going to cost? Because these are going to need a complete refurbish, aren't they? Plus a bit of design detail if you're going to do that. I think 450 per chair, because there is a lot of work in them. That sounds amazing. I, mean, I think the budget is more than fair. I can see you're going to have to do a lot of hard work, but hopefully you're going to have fun. And when I come back, I can't imagine what they're going to look like. So get them done, give me a shout, and I'm going to be right round here. I'm really excited about this project, Sarah. I think you've come up with a really ace idea. So good luck with it and see you soon. OK, see you later. Bye. So the creativity is definitely flowing with these chairs. Me and Sarah have come up with some fantastic ideas, but the one that I love is about the colour blocking that Sarah's come up with, so I can't wait to get started on them. Simeon has a budget of £900 to get the chairs colour blocked and ready to rock. Carrying colour across the tricky geometric shaped seats won't be easy, so you'll need to come at this project from all the right angles. In Sandbatch, the vintage pram has been delivered to Mark's workshop. What do you reckon, Mark? So, just taking delivery of a child's pram. Uh, I don't know, 1950s, I guess? The wheels are integral to it, but we'll have a chat through some ideas on the phone and um, see, what she, see what she thinks. Hello. Hey, Mark, how are you doing? I'm all right, Sarah, how are you? Yeah, I'm great, thanks. So, a bit of a strange one. Has the pram arrived? It has arrived. It's sat, it's sat in front of me on my table as we speak. Yeah? Excellent. I was hoping there was a way of repurposing it to give it a new function. Um, how about some kind of a drinks trolley type thing? Oh, yeah, I like that idea. The shape did actually remind me of an animal, so I thought... Oh, an animal. Right, OK. Yes, yes. Well, yeah, I mean, like a sort of steampunk mouse type thing. Oh, well, that's why I sent it to you. <laughs> OK. All right, so a he head on the front with some big ears. Um, and this would be the drink storage. So we'd have bottles here, maybe like an ice bucket here. Yeah, oh. OK. If you're able to get it looking smart, that would work really well. And how much would it cost? <laughs> um... I don't know, uh, how does, like, 300 quid, something like that? I think if it's got a really good finish, that'll be fine. I hope it doesn't cause you too many problems. OK, yes, it will be interesting. <laughs> Lovely. Great. Keep in touch. OK. Good luck with it, yeah. I'll see you when it's ready to collect. Uh, lovely. All right, then. I'll speak to you soon. Thanks, Mark. Bye. Bye-bye. 
I just had a nice chat with Sarah. So I have never made a drinks trolley mouse before. I've made some mouse sculptures in my time. I've made loads of dogs, a couple of rabbits, some mice. Uh, I've never made one out of a pram. So I'm really looking forward to the challenge. Really interesting. Mark has a budget of £300 to try and turn the pram into a mouse-like drinks trolley. There's a first time for everything. But can he bring his ambitious vision to life? With Simeon and Mark ready to get to work, in West Sussex, Sarah's about to make a start on the broken-up dining table. So, Sarah, what's the plan? I love a table project because everybody needs a table. They're so useful, but this one has some real problems that I'm going to have to overcome. So I'm going to have to do something radical. So I thought, how about apply some wallpaper and then go for a really maximalist look? Could be so much fun. Sarah's planning to overhaul the table by adding a freshly decoupaged surface. In other words, decorating it with paper. That is a really nice sized table. Just a shame about these legs. Look at that. Sarah has a jumble of broken components and needs to work out how to reassemble them to create the sturdy base. So that one and that one definitely go together. And after a lot of hammering... It's not pretty, is it? It looks like she has a frame. Wow, that's actually good progress. With a bit of glue, I might have some legs there. Happy with her base, Sarah is applying strong wood glue to the cracks before clamping them in place for a strong join. I really want to make the tabletop one solid piece now, so I'm going to reuse some of the old components and hopefully make a nice rigid join. I think reconstruction is nearly over. Time for some maximalism. So I'm going to put this on first, stick it to the whole of the table, and then add a little bit more print to make the whole thing really interesting. Sarah is spreading a thin coat of PVA glue over the surface of the table to stick the wallpaper into place, being careful to line up the pattern precisely. Next, she's moving on to creating stamps that she'll use to decorate the wallpapered top. And she's going for a strawberry design. So I've got one done. I think I need a few more different ones to add some interest. And then some leaves. One strawberry in the punnet is never enough. Well, that sort of works, doesn't it? Bit of variety there. Now I'm wondering just how exactly I get those shapes into looking like strawberries on my table. That looks like a strawberry already. Sarah is using acrylic paint to cover her stamps, which is attached to wooden blocks for ease of stamping. It's a bit messy. I quite like that. She's hoping a few strawberry stamps will liven up the tabletop without detracting from the wallpaper. Just don't overdo it, eh, Sarah? Oh, too late. So far, Sarah spent £15 on this project. She's really trying to put her own stamp on the dining table, but will her strawberry design entice a buyer? In Stockport, Simeon is getting ready to get stuck into the armchairs. So I absolutely love these chairs. Sarah's come up with an amazing idea as well, which I've been wanting to do for a long time, and that's colour blocking a chair. So I've got these really nice matte finished colours. You really can just have a real good play with these colours because there's no right or wrong, and I think it's going to look, you know, something special for sure. We'll let Sarah be the judge of that, Simeon. With his colours picked out, Simeon can get stripping. So, first things first, always start at the bottom. But he's spotted something he wants to keep. I want to make sure that I definitely save this a little clue to the past. There we go. I might even put that back on afterwards. 
Having saved the original maker's label, Simeon isn't being quite so delicate with the rest. Have you seen all of this that's come out of one chair? It's pretty bonkers, isn't it? And now you need to put it all back on. So that's the bare bones of the chair I always like to see. So what I'm going to start doing now is rebuilding the arms. I'm going to use foam because there's more consistency in it and more longevity. Simeon is planning to use modern upholstery techniques on this seat. He's drawing around a paper template to cut out the foam that will become his new seat base. So I've just used a bit of silicone spray so it glides through and we get a really nice cut on the foam. He's using a foam saw to cut it out before applying an adhesive to stick it in place. OK, so now I've got that nice curve. You can see that the arm's starting to take shape. Next, Simeon is covering the foam with a wool interliner in line with fire safety standards. I'm going to sew these two sections together and then we've got the first fabric to go on this arm here and then we can staple it off. Now we're going to do that one and don't forget, we actually have got another chair to do. Colour blocking was first seen on catwalks in the 1940s with clothing from designers thought to have taken inspiration from Piet Mondrian's artwork. Yeah, I'm happy with that. Today, it's a popular way to brighten up homes, as colour blocking furniture or walls can be achieved with just masking tape and paint. So I'm really pleased with the way this is looking now. It's, uh, you can really see it taking shape and I'm actually visualising the colours that I'm going to use on there. Got a lot more to do yet. Got to do the other arm, start doing the backs on them. But yeah, it's all looking very cool. But colour blocking two chairs? Well, there's nothing simple about that. Good luck, Simeon. Back in Sandbatch, Mark's about to get to work on the vintage pram. There's a lot of stuff that can't be used on this. So I'm going to start stripping down, getting the bare bones of it, and then start to work out how to do the rest of the build. Mark's promised Sarah he'll create a repurposed drinks trolley in the style of a steampunk mouse. It helps if you have your screwdriver going the right way. Have you had your coffee this morning, Mark? It's cold in here, I've got brain fog. He's starting by removing the parts of the vintage pram that won't be needed in his new design. So I've not found any money, but I found a pearl necklace, parts of a pearl necklace. Oh, must have been a very smart doll that owned that. Right. And that is a nice basis for the item I'm going to make. With the shell of the pram cleared out, Mark is moving on to the vintage wheels. The problem is, is that this isn't tall enough, so I need to work out how to bring this up in height to somewhere around here. But he thinks he has the solution. Good old-fashioned brute force. And without needing any heat, I think... Not far off what I want to achieve there. If that goes on there, then height-wise, we're pretty much there. Cool. With the structure of the trolley coming together, Mark is heading into the depths of his workshop to pick out salvaged items to create his steampunk mouse and he's not short of options. Found these at a car boot sale, but maybe it could be like a clockwork mouse. That might be quite cool. Steampunk design takes inspiration from 19th century science fiction and fantasy, as well as steam-powered machinery. A pair of ears on it. Uh, 
Oh, looks like that. Mark is attaching pewter plates to a brass bin to create the head of his mouse. So, how's it looking? OK, so we've got a mouse structure with some kind of a nose on there and then that on there. I think that's the sort of steampunk mouse feeling that I was going for. Quite pleased with that. Mickey's coming along nicely, but Mark now needs to fit out the interior of the drinks trolley. We have some kind of a champagne malarkey going on there with some bottles. We have some glasses down here, prep area. We have a mouse's head on the front. It's starting to look like a steampunk mouse drinks trolley. So I'm quite pleased with that. Looking good. Back in Sussex, Sarah is dressing her dining table. Looks like strawberry, smells like strawberry. Hope people like them. When she found it, the table was in a sorry state and was heading for the wood skip. But now... Sarah has taken it from smashed up to smashing, thanks to her bold strawberry-themed design. She repaired and reassembled the broken legs to create a strong and sturdy base and has painted them white with a red checkered design for added detail. For the top, she's opted for maximalism. With a wallpapered surface which has been adorned with colourful stamps of berries and leaves in the hope of creating a unique dining table. Sarah's also painted a scalloped border around the edge and the top has been varnished to protect the pattern and make it durable. She set out to pull off a fun, fresh look, but will she find a buyer? Well, I'm really pleased to say that all that clamping and gluing has really paid off. The table is now stable and it has got Brand new, very fresh look. I've majored on the strawberries, I have painted, and I cannot tell you how many layers of varnish I have put on this thing. I just hope somebody likes it as much as I do. Hello there. Hiya. Haven't been smashing up your table, have you? When Sarah met Phil, the table was in a few pieces. It was my mother-in-law's. We're sort of clearing out the flat, so... Uh, right, OK. So hence, um... It's got to go. Hence, it's like that, <laughs> so... Sarah saw its potential. If I can put it back together, yep. can I come and find you and show you what I've done with it? Yeah, of course you can. And Phil was more than happy for her to take it on. No, it's great, and if the use can be made of it, then... Brilliant. Well, Phil, Sarah's gone stamp happy with this one to try and do just that. Oh, so glossy. Sarah wasted no time taking photos and listing it online, and it was snapped up by a cafe in Marlow. Manager Sam thinks it's a perfect fit. It's a very unique table. It fits in with our theme here, so customers will love it. Something a bit different. Fits in great. Sarah's in Hazelmere to catch up with Phil to show him the table's new look and hand over the profit. Oh, oh yeah. Phil, how are you? Yeah, very well, thanks. How are you? Yeah, very well. Nice to see you yeah, again. Indeed. Gosh, you'd had some fun smashing up that table, hadn't you? Uh, yeah, just a bit. Yeah, sorry about that. Uh, no problem. And it belonged to your late mother-in-law, didn't it? Yes, it did. We were emptying her flat, then I got my uh, sledgehammer to it and smashed it up, so, which I felt awful about, but uh, never mind. Because it was a little bit smashed up, I thought I had free reign to do what I like to it. Absolutely, yeah. So I've joined the top back together, I've painted it, and it now looks like this. Oh, that's fantastic. Is that the original legs you put back or not? Is that... Those are the original legs. I've hand-painted a design on the legs, added some wallpaper and some screen printing, which I've, I've never done before. Yeah, that's amazing. So those pictures have helped sell the table. Oh, right. And I've got profit for you. Oh, brilliant. I have £230. Oh, wow. Oh, my. That's amazing. Do you have any idea about what you will do with it? And we decided to give it to uh, Helen and Douglas House. They've got a couple of charity shops in the area. 
Vera used to work there on a volunteer basis. Uh, she was their eldest member, actually, up to about 90 years old. So uh, I think it'd be quite apt that uh, we give it to them. Well, that is so lovely to hear. She sounds like an inspirational woman working into her 90s. Thank you so much. Okay. Nice to see you. Bye bye. Okay, bye. Sarah spent £15 transforming the table. It was sold for £245, leaving Phil with a profit of £230 that he's going to donate to a local charity that his mother-in-law volunteered with. Good man. Sarah's in Sandbatch to see if Mark's managed to turn the old pram into a desirable drinks trolley. Uh, slightly wacky what I've made. I mean, I've got to li I make a living making wacky things, but this is wackier than the wacky things I normally make. But uh, yeah, I think she's going to like it. So this is exciting. A hand-built, mouse-shaped, previous pram turned into a drinks trolley. I mean, that is not going to be dull, is it? But I'm really hoping it's a good investment as well. When Sarah found it, the vintage pram was on a one-way trip to the skip. But Mark got to work, and now... It's been reborn as a mouse-like drinks trolley. Mark used found objects to expertly assemble the mouse head, taking care to make sure it was symmetrical and had the steampunk style he was after. He's fitted retro serving trays, which can be used as an area to prepare drinks. And there's plenty of space to stash bottles and an ice bucket. The trolley can be moved around as Mark's retained the original wheels, which have been cleaned up and the brakes have been checked. He set out to create a unique drinks trolley that would get people talking. But will Sarah be like the cat who's got the cream when she sees it? Mark? <gasps> Mark? Hello. Oh, mouse is beautiful. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Slightly wacky. A uh, kind of vague vision that I had that it might look quite nice to sort of animate the pram. You yeah. have really brought it to life. Yeah, it's, it's come together really nicely. It was... It was a challenge. There was lots of different um, elements that I've not really worked on before, like the actual pram needed bringing back to life, as it were. But yeah, I'm really pleased with what with how it came out. So I'm seeing some lovely sort of vintage elements in there, old trays used, and are they fire dogs on the side? I don't know. I found them at a car boot sale, and I really like the look of them. I think they look like sort of rocket ship sort of bits on the side. Exactly, I'm seeing go faster mouse. I think it's fantastic. And how long did it take you to actually find the bits? As you can see, there's a lot of stuff in this building. And um, so I found these sort of pewter dishes as the ears and then a waste paper basket. It, it took a while, but it was, it, was, it was all right. There looks like there's a little piece of history in each of those, but they combine together to look so mouse-like. So I think you've definitely hit the brief. So where are you on the cash? We said £300, and I think it's the £300. It looks like, because of the attention to detail, that it can now fit into somewhere really smart, and that's important because it's a bit of an investment piece, but I think just a load of fun. And as soon as I found a quirky buyer for it, I'll be in touch and we can wheel it off to wherever it ends up. Okay. Thanks so much and see you soon. OK. Bye. Thank you, now. Bye-bye. This has come together so well. I think I might try and do one in the future. Yeah, why not? When Sarah met Peter, she couldn't see the pram being crushed. I see a vintage pram, is it a toy pram or a child's this, pram? Yeah, it was my wife's, yeah. Peter no longer had space for it. We want to clear the garage out and stuff, so yeah, that's why I'm taking it. So Sarah took it on and Peter was hopeful it could be reused. I think it'd be great if it can be recycled and used for something. Uh, it's a lot better than putting it into the skip. Mark found another use for it, Peter, but it might not be what you had in mind. But the quirky trolley was someone's cup of tea, as after being advertised online, it was sold to a cafe and deli in York. Owner Julie loves it. I can see him full of flowers in the summer. I can see him with cheese and wine. So, yeah, I just think he's just perfect. Sarah's in High Wycombe to show Peter how the pram turned out and hand over some cash. 
Peter, hello. Hi. How are you doing? Not too bad, thank you. It's a tricky brief to, to turn an old pram into something else, but have, have you, you've had some time to think about it. What did you come up with? Maybe some kind of trolley that would, for a drinks trolley or a, a garden or planter or something like that. Well, I had exactly the same thoughts. Um, not something I worked on myself. It went to Mark, who normally makes robots for us. Oh, interesting. <laughs> yes, yeah, so brace yourself because your wife's old pram. <laughs> yeah, very novel, yes. <laughs> is now a giant mouse. You can at least recognise it as the original pram, so which is quite good. Yeah, it's, it looks very good. It has had a transformation. It, it, it is a bit of fun um, and Mark has worked really hard. So I'm very pleased to say that it has found a new home. Oh, brilliant. Oh, that's really good. Money has been generated and I have oh, profit. Fantastic. I've got £50 here for you. Oh, excellent. So a little bit of a, uh, a windfall there. And where's, where's the money going to go? Well, the money will be my wife's anyway, but and I think she intends to give it to some, a charity of some kind, possibly cancer research or something like that. Oh. So it'll go, it'll be appreciated. Fantastic. I'm very pleased you managed to upcycle the pram and find it a new home, and, and I hope your wife doesn't mind too much what we've been up to. I'm sure she won't. I'm sure. It, it, it's entertaining, let's say that. <laughs> I'll go with that. On that note, lovely to see you, Peter. Thank you ever so and much you. for your time. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Mark came in on budget at £300. The steampunk drinks trolley was sold for £350 leaving Peter with a profit of £50 that he's going to give to his wife to donate to her charity of choice. Sarah's in Stockport. To find out if Simeon's conquered the colour blocking on the old armchairs. I really enjoyed working on these chairs, but how can I say it? I'm very colourfully apprehensive because I don't know whether Sarah's going to like them because they are very different. Well, this could be exciting, couldn't it? I'm hoping the moths have gone, the brown fabric has disappeared and Simeon has really got behind the colour blocking. Never had one of those before. When Sarah found them, the armchairs had style but had started to sag. But now... Simeon has brought them back to life with a bold, colour-blocked new look. He's used woolen fabric to recover the seats, with each section upholstered in different contrasting but complementary colours. He's added accent buttons to the backrests, and all of the new foam and fillings comply with fire safety standards. Simeon set out to pull off a striking new look, but will Sarah think he's hit the brief? Oh, hello! Hey, Sarah, how are you? This is so subtle and elegant. I'm glad you've said that, cos I was a bit unsure what people might make of them. They have been puzzling as well, that's for sure. Oh, yeah. dear. It's, uh, well, it's quite hard, isn't it, like, to put all these colours together? But I really like the outcome of them. I think that you have made some great decisions. The colours together, the type of fabric, it's so matte and tasteable, isn't it? Mm. It is achingly good. You've hit the nail on the head completely, the matte finish of it kind of represents what I was trying to do with the colour blocking that's really popular on walls. I can hear you saying that it's been a tricky task and taken a load of time. Mm. So that must have had an impact on the budget. It's bang on, uh, on, on budget, really, you know, at 4 50 per chair. I think you've created things that are so striking. Mm. I, I'm, I'm thinking that they may go off in different directions because almost one of these in a room will be enough. They're yeah. so bright and bold. Yeah. But I'm super pleased with them, mm. and I hope that you love them. Maybe next time you come here, the whole studio will be this colour. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, I'll leave you on that note. Nice to see Thanks, you. Thanks, Sarah. Bye. 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 Well, that went well. Nobody would seen these chairs, so I was a little bit worried um, about what Sarah would think about them, because that's the important thing. But she's gone off now. She's very happy with them, and hopefully they're going to go to two separate homes. When Sarah met Andrew and Annette, she loved the look of the old armchairs. These look fantastic. Are they things that you've been growing up with for how, however long? Well, they were in use, sort of, in that there wasn't a, they, they weren't replaced at all, but we, uh, we sort of gradually sunk further and further into them. As <laughs> Sarah wheeled them away, 
and Andrew and Annette were delighted. And they've escaped this sort of last, you know, step of being thrown into the tip. <laughs> yes. Well, just wait until you see their colourful new look. After being advertised online, one of the seats sold to an independent furniture shop in Hampshire. Marketing manager Rabad thinks it has the wow factor. What I like the most about the armchair are the super bright and unique colours. It's a very fun chair and that's why I think our customers will love it. But did the second armchair find a new home? Sarah's catching up with Annette via video call to show her the results and tell her if she's managed to produce a profit. Nice to see you, Annette. How are you? I'm, I'm fine, thank you. <laughs> Excellent. You down in the West Country, is that right? Yes, I'm in Plymouth. Um, so you were slightly off patch when we caught up at the recycling centre and I think you were clearing out your uh, parents' house, is that right? Well, we were clearing out sort of the rest of the stuff from our, our parents' house because we would taken rather a long time to clear the house and we were finally doing it and finally selling it. <laughs> and the chairs, they really caught my eye because they had such a, a great shape to them. Uh, so they have been updated and I've got some pictures, if it's OK. I'm going to send them over to you. Hopefully you'll be able to, to see them. Well, let's look at the first one and then, then I can get Wow! <laughs> it is a transformation, yes. <laughs> they sort of have a very modern look about them and a multicoloured look about them. I can see from the look of your face you're a little bit surprised. The fact that they are having a new lease of life is really rather more than we could have expected. <laughs> But I'm very pleased, too, that they're being reused because they've actually found new homes. So it means I've got some profit here for you. I have got, um, I've got £450 here that's going to be coming your way. Well, they've turned into quite expensive chairs. <laughs> um, they have certainly turned a, a, a very good profit, yes. So some money there that it, you weren't expecting. Can you think about what might happen to it? I suppose we share it three ways between us. But I think my part will probably go to... a. Uh charitable cause. At the moment, I'm thinking of um, refugees from Ukraine. Oh, I think that's a great, a great cause to support. Well, I will send this down to you and hopefully your siblings will have some as well and um, be able to choose what they would like to do with it. <laughs> well, thank you very much. <laughs> An absolute pleasure. Thank you ever so much, Annette. Good to catch up. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye. Simeon came in on budget at £900. Both colour blocked chairs sold for a total of £1,350, leaving a profit of £450 that Annette is going to share with her siblings and donate her portion to charity. Lovely. Very nice to meet you. Sarah saved three items from being lost forever. The armchairs have been revived with a colourful update. The pram has been reborn and has a brand new use. And the table has been updated and will now live on in a new home. Well, I thought the items that I saved might have potential, but Simeon and Mark went the extra mile to make sure they now have a fantastic new life ahead of them. They're quirky, original and inspiring things.